Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. This is Father Jonathan. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to continue our series on the lives of the saints, and on this, the 20th of September, we celebrate the memory of the holy great martyr Eustathios, of his wife Theopista, and of their children Agapius and Theopistus. Saint Eustathios was called Placida, and his wife Tatiana, before they and their sons became Christians. Placidus was a general who lived at Rome in the time of Trajan from 98 to 117 AD. Even though he was a pagan, he was remarkably virtuous, virtuous and had an especial love for the poor. Seeing his well-disposed nature, God revealed himself somewhat as he had done to St. Paul. When Placidus was hunting in the forest one day and had a great stag at bay, he beheld between its antlers a cross brighter than the sun on which could he could see Christ. He also heard the voice saying, Placidus, why are you pursuing me? I am Christ whom you unwittingly honor by your good works. I came on earth in human form to save mankind and appear to you today so to catch you in the nets of my love for man. Astonished and terror-struck, Placidus fell from his horse and was without consciousness for several hours. The truth of the vision was beyond a doubt when Christ appeared a second time and gave him to know that he is by nature God, the maker of heaven and earth, who out of love for mankind has taken our nature upon himself. Placidus then believed from the depths of his heart and was baptized with his wife and their sons. And they all took new names. Eustathius and Theopista became Christ the Christian names of the parents and Agapius and Theopistus, those of their sons. Seeing in him the righteousness which is of faith, the Lord again appeared to Eustathius and told him of tribulations like Job's that the devil would bring upon him but that divine grace would remain with him. Soon afterwards, he lost all he possessed and decided to take ship to take ship for Egypt with his wife and children. The master of the vessel was a licentious rogue and seized his wife in the moment that he and his sons disembarked. Eustathius tearfully went on his way, and as he was crossing the river, a wolf and a lion made off with his sons, leaving him a ruined and lonely man whose faith and only hope were in the mercy of the Lord. So this once brilliant member of the Roman nobility now went from one place to another with the patience of Job, living by casual work. He settled at last at an orchard as an orchard watchman in the place called Bis Badissos, not far from where his two sons who had been rescued by shepherds, were growing up unbeknown to him. Fifteen years later, barbarians among whom Theopista was living in captivity were preparing to invade the empire in large numbers, but the Romans were unable to find a general skillful enough to withstand them. Then the emperor recalled the courage and many victories of Astathius and sent in search of him. When he appeared at court, Eustathius was scarcely recognizable. Poverty and affliction had also altered his countenance. The emperor restored him to his rank and possessions and gave him command of the legions, which, with God's help, drove back the barbarians. During the campaign, Eustathius was reunited with his wife and children that his patience might not be without reward in this life. On his triumphal return, to Rome, Hadrian, the new emperor, loaded him with gifts and asked him to offer sacri a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the idols for his victory. Eustathius replied that to Christ alone was the victory due and not to the fancied power of false gods. This reply aroused the anger of the tyrant. Once again, all his goods were confiscated, and St. Eustathius, his wife and children, were given to be food for the lions. As the beast crouched reverently before them, not daring to touch them, 
The holy martyrs were thrown into a red-hot bronze cauldron shaped like a bull, where they gave up their souls to God without their bodies undergoing any change. This astonishing this astonished the pagans and brought great joy to the faithful, who recognized by this sign that the grace of God dwelt in the bodies of the holy martyrs and remained with them for consolation in their sufferings. By the prayers and supplications of the holy great martyrs, Eustathius, of his wife Theopista, and of their children, Agapius and Theopistus, may the Lord God have mercy on us and save us. Amen. God bless you. We're here for you. We love you dearly. Don't hesitate to reach out. Call us, email us, leave us a message on social media, leave us a note in the comment section. If you'd like to support this ministry, remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Again, God bless you and have a beautiful rest of your day.